<laughs> my wife told me last time I was very uptight. I, I just had to be myself, but on an elevated podium up here, I don't think I can be myself. <laughs> right. Um, right. For this morning's meditation, let's turn to Hebrews 6. Uh, but before that, uh, I need somebody to help me out. I'm a brother in need, right? So I need uh, somebody on, on this side on the Old Testament and somebody on this side of the New Testament, please. Right? But this one I'll read. This one is my opener. Right? Hebrews 6, chapter 7. Land that drinks in the rain, often falling on it, and that produces a crop useful to those for whom it is farmed, receives the blessing of the Lord. Yeah. One more time. Land that drinks in the rain, often falling on it, and that produces a crop useful to those for whom it is farmed, receive the blessing of the Lord. Let's bow our heads, heads in prayer. Loving Father in heaven, let your name be glorified. Let your acts be revealed. Let your family be blessed. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. Father in heaven talks to us, no doubt. He is the Lord who talks, and He is the Lord who ensures that we listen, and He enjoys the change that His Word brings in our lives. He rejoices over it. Now, He has a very interesting way of telling us very complicated things. He does not like complicated aspects. He, he puts it in a very simple manner. Amen. Right? Most of the time, God has attributed His parables to father-son relationship, mother-son relationship, marriage, things of the soil, things <coughs> pertaining to the soil, how you toil in the soil, how the soil returns its yield, how you enjoy harvest. Those are the things that God mildly puts in front of us to explain real complicated stuff. Now, over here, it's a very simple sentence, a lot of things involved. Let's break it down and try to get through it one, pe one part at a time. So, the land that drinks in the rain often falling on it. The land is a representation at least to me, representing the people of the earth. Not believers, believers and non-believers alike. Okay? That drinks in the rain, it's an active process, right? It's drinking, which means that it's consuming something. All right? It's, there, is, there are people and they are consuming something. The rain that often falling on it, rain, water, waves, river, everything is a representation of the Holy Spirit. In other words, it's the Word. It's a living Word. Often falling on it shows us the sovereignty by which God decides to intervene in the lives of people. There are people who are born into Pentecostal families. There are people who are born into New Covenant truths. But there are some of us in whose lives God has intervened without an invitation. Yes. Some of us responded to it. Yes. We are here because of that. Amen. Right? Yes. So, so God sovereignly decides, yes, I am going to intervene in this individual's life. That's his sovereignty, right? Now, the other part is, produces a crop useful to those for him it is farmed. Produces a crop would have been enough. We would have got the drift. We understand what the remaining thing is. But scripture is to be if something is written there, we might as well just take time to read it, right? Crop useful to whom it has been farmed. 
Yes. I have two pear trees in my backyard. I dare not eat pears from that tree because I know what I'm putting as uh, fertilizer for that thing. <laughs> it, is, it is outsourced and they are not organic friendly. I wouldn't even taste it. Does my pear produce fruits? Yes. Will I consume it? No. So, we can still consume the rain and, and produce fruits, not useful to anybody. That's what's being, between the lines, that's what we mentioned here. Now, so that produces a crop useful to those whom it has been farmed, receives the blessing of the Lord. Blessing of the Lord is plain and simple. It's his acknowledgement of your effort. Let me personalize this thing in my own way, right? People with whom God have dealt over periods of time through His Word and through the Holy Spirit must bear good fruit in season, out of season, when you are called at the time of need and when you bear such a fruit, there will be a blessing on your life and somebody else will definitely be blessed. Amen. 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 Somebody else will actually become a part of this family of Christ. Amen. Amen. So, now, I will not read verse 8 because let's stop at 7. Now, uh, okay, I flipped my book. Uh, no. So, all right. So, in this whole sentence, right, there, how many things can we do? I was hoping this would be an interactive session. <laughs> Just, can we, can we be the land? Consume. Right? Consume. Okay. Consume. Consume is one. What else can we do? Produce fruit. Produce fruit. Produce useful fruit. Right? Okay. So, consumption we do. Sunday through Sunday we consume. We are consumers, including me. Whenever I, I whatever I say, it's as if I'm with you. Right? Even though this is like two feet above the ground, I'm... <laughs> I'm on level playing with you guys, right? So, be consume. That's a good thing and a bad thing. Right? To whom much is given, much yes. will be asked. Amen. Amen. So, every message that we hear, every, every word that we glean from the Bible, we are accountable. Praise God. We might as well tell it to somebody else. Now, so we can do two things. Consumption, we are good at it. Check. Producing useful crop. How do we produce useful crop? Um, can somebody help me with Matthew 13, 13? I said Old Testament, this side, New Testament, this side, right? So Matthew 13, 23. I'm really bad at picking this. And the one whom, and the one on whom seed was sown on the good soil, this is the man who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and brings forth some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. Okay, okay. So, the word is going to come, it's going to fall on us. Oh, thank you. This is good. Uh, okay, so who indeed bears the fruit and produces hundred, uh, uh, sixty, okay, good. Now, you have to, in order to bear fruit, there are two things that are required. Hear the, hear the word and understand the word. Amen. Right? Amen. Hearing the word, God has not put flappers on our lips, uh, on our ears. So, it will just come in. But it's up to us to understand it. Amen. Right? Amen. That requires active 
involvement. It, it requires active engagement from our part. Okay, now you, okay, now you understood it. So immediately after, after you understand, you heard the word, you understood the word, do you bear fruit? Okay, interactive. I don't think so, right? So you don't bear fruit immediately, right? There is one more action that is required. And for that, again, Matthew 3.8. So you, you hear the word, you understand the word, and you produce fruit with repentance. So we have to repent. Repent, repentance is something that has been Old Testament days onwards it has been there, right? Repentance is... 100% our activity. Very little God can do it. God, what He can do is show you the mirror. Okay? Now you make amends in your life. Even when you go all the way to the tail end of the scripture, God does not... He creates inconveniences for you so that you will repent, but He does not force repentance just like how he does not force salvation. Yes. Right? So, let's take a look at what is repentance. First, from an Old, Old Testament perspective, Ezekiel 18, verses 30, 31, 32, please. Rid yourselves of all the offenses you have committed and get a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die O house of Israel, for I take no pleasure in the death of anyone, declares the sovereign Lord. Repent and live. Thank you. So, repent, turn away from your sins. Plain and simple. Old Testament command, you find something wrong, acknowledge the fact, turn away from sin. Or else, as Kenny read, you'll die. And he does not take any pleasure in death. He does not like it, but this is one thing that God does not enjoy, but He permits. You can die. You can die in, we can die in our sin. All He can do is, hey, He gave the commands. He even sent His Son. There is, there is a technical spec, and there is proof of concept. And now if you cannot follow that, well, you choose your destiny, right? Now, coming to the New Testament. 2 Corinthians 7, 9 and 10. Yet now I am happy, not because you were made sorry, but because your sorrow led you to repentance. For you became sorrow, sorrowful as God intended, and so were not harmed in any way by us. Godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret. But worldly sorrow brings death. Okay. So, there is a sorrow that is involved. You become sorry for something that you did. But Christ has made a way for us to repent and get back on track. Amen. I, it's, I imagine myself would be a little bit inconvenienced hauling bulls and carts all the way to EPC if I were to do a repentance the old-fashioned way. And for you, it might be considerably easy, but it would be a slight inconvenience to me. So, what the point is, is, so we repent, we make amends, we move on. Um, does that mean that you will not fall again? I will. I hope you don't. Right? So, what do you do in that case? You shamelessly lift yourself, acknowledge the fact, get back on the saddle, try again. Amen. 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 You fail again. God has given us a standard. Hey, you forgive your brothers seven times seventy, right? I'm sure God's standards are much higher than ours. 
his bracket is much bigger. Right? Shamelessly, you get back. Acknowledge the fact. Repent. In all this process, there is one thing that's happening. Your pride is being crushed. Yes. The pride that, God, I am standing in full acceptance in your presence. It's because of something that I did. Amen. You fail. You fall in your eyes. But God has set a mark. You get back on track. There is a time allocated for you to get out, repent, and be on track. Right? So, never be ashamed to fall, fall down. You, if you can avoid it, great. But if it's unavoidable, you fall down. You acknowledge the fact. You accept that, Lord, I'm sincerely sorry. You get back in again. Right? So that is, what is repentance? Why do you want to repent? There is another small thing telling that. For godly sorrow produces repentance leading salvation. to salvation. Salvation, so salvation in itself does not provide much, right? You have to put context behind it. So you probably, I shouldn't be saying this from this podium, but you have to understand the ministry of Satan for what salvation means. He is in a fantastic business with his comrades to deceive, use us, destroy us, and throw us by the wayside. He is doing a phenomenal job. Amen. He has not failed most of the time. He has succeeded. The reason why we have so many divisions of Christianity, the reason why we have so many <coughs> factions is just because of the fact that he has been a stellar performer. <clears throat> I always thought, why does he have so much unity? His destiny is sealed. He has nothing to look forward to. His permanent place is decided. He is beyond redemption. And a celestial being like that can do massive damage to us. We are born into his custody till we are being a born again person. So imagine, I know I, for the last messages I find that we are very pictorial. Don't worry, I do not have pictures. I, I will not ask anybody to come and mind this thing. Imagine yourself tied to a mountainside. A lot of chains, right? From the hands, legs and all those things. That is the condition, spiritual condition of our birth. Now, God destroyed the mountain. Yes. Right? You are free to run. You have a course laid out for you and you are free to run. When God destroyed the mountain, depending upon how much light you had, there will be parts of the mountain attached to your chains. The chains are still there. You are running with these chains. What God does is during the course of your run, there will be situations where he will show you what those chains are through the word. All you have to do is acknowledge, drop the chain, move on. Yes. So, why repent? Acts 17.30. Okay, uh, my bad actually. The next one. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given a proof for all this by raising him from the dead. Now, maybe we need to understand this. We know that God is going to judge us. We know all this is going to happen. We are on board for repentance. We need to do all that. Let me stress the urgency of it. Ever since I came into this 
uh, sanctuary this morning, I was sitting at the back seat. I was having butterflies in my stomach thinking when my name will be called. Okay? I saw Pastor here, Pastor Mullah here. I thought, okay, maybe I'll be excused. <laughs> and uh, I was not. <laughs> Clearly. Right? So, my name was called. Our names will be called. Amen. We will be ushered into His presence. Not to deliver a message. There will be the life of Chicho George Thomas playing in the back screen. <laughs> this is a pretty picture that you are seeing of me. This picture won't be true at the time of judgment if I don't repent. Amen. Right. So, once we repent, we can skip that part. We'll get on with the other activities. But when the word is shown into our lives, when the word actually articulates what's wrong, we might as well just accept the fact that, Lord, oh, I might have been taught by my father, I might have been taught by my whoever, but your word says this, and this is the understanding that your heart has spoken to my heart. I repent. I move on. Amen. Right? So, ushering into His presence, really, I think it, it, it takes the ball all the way into the goalpost. That time will come. You might be alive. We might be six feet under. But that's still going to come. Right? Alright. Now, Second Peter 3.8. This is also in relation to why we should repent. But, beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Why did I choose that verse? <laughs> <laughs> there is a reason. There is a reason. God loves this church so much. You know why? Because he gives me messages whenever pastor asks me to prepare something. And this is his doing, so he might have a very good reason. Or I have a terrible handwriting. Second Peter 3, 8. Okay. Can you were right? But what I forgot to mention is the next one. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting anybody to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Want to know God's will? God wants us to repent, period. End of discussion, right? And repentance does not stop with renunciation of one sin. We have no idea how bad we are. It's only when you are pressed against the wall with situations in life, that God really shows you what you are really made up of, what Amen. we are really made up of. Amen. I'm not angry with a brother. Right? I, I and that brother probably fought tooth and nail in the past. I forgave him as per command. I, I went and hugged him. We are done. We are great. I would say take a cup of coffee, sit, take, a, take some time out, and just Think about what went through in your head with that brother. If your pulse does not rise, yes, you have forgiven that brother. Amen. My pulse rises. <laughs> so clearly, <laughs> clearly, I have not, I'm not there yet. But I have repented to the degree that God has shown me what's wrong. There are multiple areas where I need to get there, but this is one of them that I have done, so I'm sharing it with you. Now, oh, just in case the scripture says only this is how you are supposed to do stuff, scripture also says how not to repent. Jeremiah 8, 6. I listened and heard but they do not speak or write. No man repented of his wickedness, saying, What have I done? Everyone turned to his own course, 
as the horse rushes into the battle. Okay. Do not repent by saying that it's not my fault. I did this because XYZ. You are wrong. I was wrong. I accept the fact. Give me grace. Next time I confront this situation, give me grace to overcome it. Period. That's what God wants. Do you think God does not know a situation that leads you to sin? God knows exactly what the reason is. Right? And there is a very good reason that He made you go through it. Take responsibility. God will bless us. Right? Now, the other part is how long do I have to repent? Revelation. This is pastor's class and forte. I will not venture into that too much, but I will say a couple of verses that I found which was like, oh my God, they are graphical. So, um, Revelation 16, verses 9 and 11. Hey, that one I can get pretty easy. And men were scourged with great heat, and they blasphemed the name of God who has power over these plagues, and they did not repent and give him glory. They, uh, 11 yeah, let it. They blasphemed the God of heaven because of their plan, of their pains and their sores, and did not repent of their deeds. Okay. This is like tail end of time where everything, books are about to be closed, everything is going to be tallied out. God is going to put a curtain on this whole business, right? God is giving them the last chance. Repent. And I believe Holy Spirit is still on earth at that point, right? Otherwise, they cannot repent, right? Yeah, okay. All right. so that's, that's right. So, there is hope. But there is a verse, there is a phrase that said, men nod their tongue. Have you accidentally bit your tongue? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Very limited people would say that it's a pleasant experience. <laughs> right? Gnawing is the act of forcefully chewing. Because they were cursing the God. All they had to do was repent. They, he would, they would not accept his sovereignty over them. So my question is, why wait? We have it good. Let's repent. Right? Repentance leads to salvation. Clearly, there is no debate over that matter. Salvation, as you break the chains that are attached to us, we move on. We become lighter, we become nimble, we become more, more detached from the world. We run a race worthy of our calling. And all throughout this, what happens is we course correct based on the word that is sh shown upon us. Right? And in, in the background, what happens is imagine God as a line all the way through, right? A horizontal line. Jijo is probably a line just goes all the way, like that. Intersected somewhere in here, right? That's how we met Christ. I met Christ. You can personalize this by your names and your lines and how much variation is there in the degrees. This is my trajectory right now. God speaks. God sears, sees where. Oh, is Jijo being too fanatic or is he, is he oversteering it? God speaks one more time. Okay. You bring it back again. Finally, over the course of time, before one individual ends his lifespan, he gives us ample opportunities. He's a righteous God. Man. He knows exactly what's wrong with us. He knows every atom of our sin. Right? He gives us enough opportunities to repent and he gives us enough venues to do so. With the word, he course corrects and he brings that line as close to the main line as possible. Amen. And that line is nothing other than the life of Christ. Amen. We become one in Christ Amen. through the word. Amen. So when we are ushered into his presence, no surprises. Oh, we are as close as what we can get to him. In conclusion, let me say that God gave us Old Testament. God said, this is what you do. 
God did not make a mistake for X number of years by giving us the Old Testament and said, okay, these guys didn't get it. Jesus Christ has to go down. No. He gave us the Old Testament so that He will flush out the, the I can do attitude in us. God chose each one of us to be born in this age of convenience where the biggest qualification for salvation, even though it's not written in the Bible, according to me, is honesty. All you have to be, do is be honest with ourselves, Amen. not with anybody else. Father, I have sinned, I have this issue, you have to take care of me. Amen. He will take care of it. Maybe not overnight, but He will take care of it. Amen. So, all we have to do is hear the word, understand the word, assimilate the word, repent of our sins, and yeah. repentance is take full responsibility, even if it's your spouse's fault, it's, it's our fault. Full responsibility, course correct, and be close representation of what Christ wants us to be. And at that point, we will be able to bear useful crop Amen. to the farmer Amen. by consuming the word of the Lord. As, as EPC is venturing, as our church is venturing into proclaiming the gospel in Stafford, be it in Austin, in Punjab, as each one of you go forth from here, ensure that the tools of your craft are forged in the love, in the fiery love of Christ. Amen. Amen. Any work that you do out of such a heart, Lord will bless and it will yield its hundredfold returns. Amen. Amen. May God bless you all. Hallelujah.